Well, you know what they say about the future. It's pretty bright. <laughs> it is so bright. <laughs> well, uh, once again, yes. Uh, we've got an excellent game here coming up. We're fighting it out for fifth and sixth place. It's Des Moines Derby Brats v. Tampa Bay Junior Roller Derby. Uh, exciting times here. Tampa Bay coming in at third. Des Moines coming in at fifth, fighting it out here. Some exciting things. Uh, in the black today is Tampa. Rain Payne, number 10. Frico Suave, 1217. Lemonade, 1676. Number 22 is Princess Slaya. Complicated, number 23. Abby Normal, number 3. Four is Anya Lasner. Sonic Boom wears 41. Alligator is number 42. 666 is Mean Bean. Shark Bites wears number 789. Nightmare is number 88. Triple Eight Peaches and Scream. Hot Wheels number 9. And Honey Badger, triple 9. Uh, All right, folks. Let's face facts. Can't read with these things. <laughs> Des Moines. <laughs> in white. I'm just going with it. O2 T Rex Lex, O24 Sour Cheetah, 101 Goldie Knox, 13 Kaboom, 20 is Whiplash, 23 Recknology, number 3 Brick House, 325 Sasquatch, 354 Ladies Man, 411 Chimera, 62 Cuban Missile, 711 Miss Banditude, 731 Enigma, 888 Scream Puff, and 999 Miss Mayhem. Awesome. Uh, it's been an exciting weekend here in Loveland, Colorado. Uh, we couldn't do it without the support of the absolutely stellar people with the Junior Roller Derby Association, uh, putting it on our uh, officials crew. Uh, officials working hard today on this track in this game. Montana Mahler, the Ginger Ninja, Headless Horseman, Snarkamedes, Ice Pack, Shakur, Melanie, Ultraviolet Blue, Wakamoli, Brakenya, Stone Nasty, Rockstar, Dilly Gaff, Ninja, Killaby, Scooby Don't, Honey Badger, and Guinness. Uh, best skaters, best officials, best referees, best fans, including those of you uh, watching on WFTDA.TV. Yes, absolutely. Uh, checking through my notes here. Um, I've definitely seen Des Moines play more often than many of the other uh, Open Division teams. So uh, I'm feeling really excited. They've definitely been growing and uh, made a great showing here. These teams have played each other twice already this season with Tampa taking the lead uh, both times. Not surprising, uh, Tampa ranked third and Des Moines ranked fifth, but uh, there's definitely been consistent upsets in, uh, and surprises, pleasant surprises from teams taking big runs, uh, big unexpected runs. So we look forward to an exciting battle here. Again, Tampa in the black with pink trim, and Des Moines will be in the white with purple trim. So Des Moines in the white, uh, ladies' man, number 354, is uh, jamming and is the lead jammer. Uh, Frico Suave struggling through this nice, strong tripod of Des Moines blockers at the back. First four points on the board. Freak Oswave pushing through. Uh, only Enigma to beat uh, gets knocked out and recycled all the way back. And ladies man picking up a full set of points there. So that's an 8 no run as we take this first jam. Jitters off the, off the track. One minute in and eight points, first eight points on the board. Uh, still lots of derby to be played. And if it's, as, if it's you know, two thirds as tight as all the other games we've seen today, that is, uh, yeah, uh, don't blink. <laughs> all right, and that's uh, Goldie Knox number 101 is a lead jammer for Des Moines. Shark Bites uh, going to the penalty box for a track cut violation. 
Pride giving Goldie Knox, uh, who has an absolutely stellar record. I believe I called a game of uh, Des Moines yesterday, and he was pretty near close to 100% lead jammer every time he went out. A uh, skater for one of the uh, World Roller Games. Two passes, eight points, 16 and 0 there for Des Moines. That is quite a start, but uh, a couple games ago we did see uh, that, that even more than that was made up in several jams as part of a comeback. Oh, any, anything could happen. A whole lot of time left on this clock, a whole lot of talent on that track on both sides. Uh, it's, it's really anyone's game. Predictions, whatever. Nah, we've had a number of upsets this weekend, so uh, we throw that out. We certainly have. Well, and I think because that's ladies' man number 354 is lead jammer. Um, I think because this uh, great country is so big and broad, there's talent from different coasts who don't get a chance to play each other very often. So uh, you never really know what's going to happen. That's right. Even, even in a matter of weeks, such as the Duval Los Anarchists uh, series, they traded wins, and uh, that, that can happen at multiple events. Absolutely. Even after a halftime. <laughs> Ladies man with a second pass, eight points. 24-0 run here for Des Moines. That is, yes, the third jam of the game and three eight-point jams. Uh, Des Moines throughout the weekend, I've noticed, have kept uh, a pretty tight two-jammer rotation between... Goldie Knox and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, ladies' man. Uh, I expect to see nothing uh, very different than that here. Uh, oh, and that's Anya Last Nerve, jammer for Tampa, cutting that streak of Des Moines and getting lead. And Anya Last Nerve, you notice the. Uh, the hair there, uh, whatever yes. color it happens to be on camera, but uh, easy to point out uh, that jammer there uh, is also sibling of um, Frico Suave, Mean Bean, and Abby Normal. Oh, wow. It's a, a it's family, a family of affair, isn't it? Yes. I, I feel like it is. <laughs> We've got a couple of siblings traveling with us, and we're uh, our skaters are working hard to try to get them them in on the Derby family. Oh, Princess Slaya almost uh, on the outside line, not quite making it up. Recycled back by Des Moines blockers. Close uh, one there. Close one there, but ladies man is your lead jammer doing some one-on-one uh, -on -one blocking with Princess Leia. One-on-one, <laughs> -on -one, face to face, eye to eye. It's, it's a stare down here in turn two. Um, I, I'm impressed they're keeping a straight face. Who will flinch first? I saw, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Slaya with the push through. Fighting it up front from Sasquatch. A ladies man, I had burning some clock time there. Mm -hmm. Going with that intimidation factor. Slay of work and working to push Enigma. And Nightmare moving back, 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 back. And uh, there's the call off. So 6 4, net 2 for Des Moines, making 30 to 8. All right, points on the board for Princess Slaya. And. Uh, on your last nerve here, these last two jams, which is great. Great for Tampa, 30 to eight. Eleven eight with a, a deep lunge and toe on the pivot line. Really, really wanting the front. That's Goldie Knox with the star for Des Moines and Frico Suave. Direction of gameplay, penalty going to number three on the white team, that's Brickhouse. Frico with the second lead jam call for Tampa in the game. 
However, called on a cut there in the turn. Yeah, it was a surely a track cut. One toe stop in, one toe stop out. Also the second jammer penalty for Tampa. Push out and draw back. Goldie Knox recycled to the back. Continuing to push. Makes his way through for yet another scoring pass. Good defense there, holding up the jammer for a bit as Frico Suave is released. Eliminate last line of defense there, but uh, no match for the uh, one foot glide balancing act. That is Goldie Knox. And 12 points scored thus far, four now for Tampa. And we're going a full two minutes here. Lemonade doing some great one on one blocking, bringing Goldie Knox up to the rest of the wall. Okay, more points on the board. Wait on the count. Looks like it'll be 16 8, net 8 for Des Moines. All right, ladies, man, and I believe that's Shark Bites, number 789. A strict two jammer rotation for Des Moines. Seven jams in. It has been ladies, man, and it has been Goldie Knox. And it is again ladies, man. Ladies man with four points. Uh, nothing up on the board for Tampa. 50 to 16. We're going into jam number seven. Des Moines has ruled the lead jammer game. Seven jams, five lead. Uh, two lead for Tampa. And in those two jams, they did score 12 of those 16 points. Much deeper jammer rotation on the Tampa bench. As you mentioned, strict two jammer rotation here for Des Moines. Seems to be working for them this weekend well just as we say that 731 enigma yes <laughs> forearm penalty oh uh, was a called him yep. a little bit a little bit of swimming to push through there multiplayer penalty going to brick house opportunity here for anya last nerve anya is your lead jammer looking for some offense just needs to pass one set of hips to get those uh, not on the track points. And uh, Jam Ref is nodding. They are in, four points up. Standing up to the pivot and uh, recovers quickly back in bounds and through. Enigma through on initial pass there for Des Moines. Enigma currently a free agent skater, wants to start refing also. Is that one of the aging out skaters, or do we have a bit more time here? Actually, uh, yeah, Enigma is. This will be the last time we see Enigma. So you might know better than me if there is a uh, MRDA team in the Des Moines area. I'm sure anyone in that portion of the country <laughs> is uh, watching closely. Certainly. Your your mom? Oh, that's Thanks, of Pons. course. That, and that's not just an insult. That's a that's a uh, quite that's an accomplished team. derby team. Princess Slay out here fighting up a very strong tripod of Des Moines blockers. Goldie Knox, lead jammer. Yeah. 
lay it through on our initial. Goldie Knox is going to call it off. Four points up for Des Moines. And so with the 54-28 score, last, last four jams, uh, Des Moines, let's see, with 24, and Tampa with 20. Frico Suave and ladies man here. Complicated grabbing his face, looking for a high block call, not gonna happen. Ladies' man approaching the pack for scoring. Excessive, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Sorry, Brickhouse back to the back to the penalty box right. for Des Moines. Yeah, uh, successive penalties called, and uh, we'll just have to see how many. Skaters are on the track by, by my angle. We've got uh, uh, coaches and skaters kind of moving in and out from our, from our vantage point. I, I believe that's complicated uh, sitting in there. And someone else from Tampa. I can't see our angle here. Uh, A little different from the other track. Yes, definitely different from the other track. We're, uh, we're, we're posted up here in turn one, just beyond the pivot line. So... Uh, we don't have the luxury of the back of skaters' jerseys, so it doesn't take us long to figure out a few of those key players and regular jammers in rotation. A little surprised nobody on the Twitch chat yet has said, what's a pivot line? <laughs> that thing still exists. <laughs> Not using it much these days. The jam timer's on it right now, if you look closely. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you new... Uh, those of us from back pre-2012 uh, will remember those days of starts on your knee and two whistle starts. But here we've got Goldie Knox on the jam start line up against Lemonade. First time seeing Lemonade jam today. Goldie Knox with lead. Oh, Lemony flying. I don't know if he's, uh, something's gone wrong with his skate. Uh, that's a, that's going to be a tough break because illegal contact and a power jam it is. So time ticking. And there is a pivot in play. So uh, if, eh, I'm not the coach, but if, if Lemonade could possibly move on to get the track up and and pass the star but safety first and uh it's uh coach it, coach rojo with a bit of frustration but uh at this point what are you going to do i think his foot slipped right out of his skate but continuing to push on does not pass the star appears to be uh equipment back in uh back in full functional condition Nice, strong tripod here from Tampa. Whoa! Flying into the pack. But uh, met with the defense there by Sasquatch. Offense run by Honey Badger. Uh, it's Honey Badger the skater, not Honey Badger the uh, official. official. We have both. <laughs> Penalty call, an, uh, another illegal contact call. This be uh, this one on Lemon Eight, and tough break as two three to end the jam. So seven six. It appears net one for Tampa, despite the. Uh, Equipment drama there. Yes, it's still a great run for Tampa. Third highest scoring jam for Tampa there. Still very early, 35 to 64, uh, 14 
More than 14 minutes left in this first period. Fifth, fifth place game here in the Open Division at the Junior Roller Derby Association Championships live from Loveland, Colorado. Thank you for joining us. Final day of competition. And next up will be third place games and then the championship games. Those will be played both on the yellow track one at a time, so you won't have to pick between tracks for those. Currently the uh, third place Open Division game going on on the other track, but just take our word for it. Stay here. <laughs> Yeah, crowd's already starting to line up on the yellow track. Get your spot. <laughs> oh, Enigma really working there, but successful star pass here to number 23 is complicated for Tampa Bay. New jammer. Oh, a little bit of a pile up there. Uh, no whistles being called. Complicated on the board, but uh, points immediately being met by Des Moines Jammer 12 4, net 8. Mm -hmm. well, it looks like shark bites lining up for. Shark bites for Tampa, Goldie Knox for Des Moines. Goldie Knox with 34 points so far of the 76 on the board, unofficially. Shark bite sneaking through on that outside line. A great defensive work here from the Tampa Bay blockers. Honey Badger called out on multiplayer block for Tampa. Four point scoring trip complete and the call off. Lemonade spending some time there adjusting a, a knee pad, having a bit of an equipment trouble these days. But uh, I expect to see great things from them later on in the day. Uh, do stick around. Uh, as Standby was mentioning, after these two games, these uh, fifth and sixth place and third and fourth place games of the Open Division, you can see the championship game on the yellow track. Uh, Santa Cruz v. Los Anarchists. Santa Cruz coming in the number one seed in this female division. Uh, Los Anarchists coming in at number three. And someone in the Twitch chat waiting for Philly to play. Philly will play the Diamond City Miners in the championship game of the Open Division. That will be at 7 o'clock Mountain Time, or for those of you on the East Coast, that will be 9 p.m. on a Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Pop some popcorn and get ready for that one, that's for sure. Uh, hoping everyone has the ability to cast from their device to their uh, home television. It's my favorite way to watch Roller Derby online, that's for sure. Get that big screen up. Yeah, lots of quality derby being played all weekend, and uh, glad you could join us, even if it's now. But, uh, yeah, starting even even from the very beginning, some close ones, and as we said, uh, you know, a number of upsets, some surprises mid-game, late-game, uh, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, you know, some teams, uh, some teams not as dominant, some teams are dominant, and uh, you just match them all up, and especially here on the final day, seeing some awfully close games. Ladies man juking past that last line of defense on your last nerve. Pushing, pushing, being schooled by number 62. That's Cuban Missile. What do you think, missile or missile? Yeah, that's a regionalism, isn't it? It uh, is. Uh, we say missile in, in the south. In the south, Cuban Missile. Kind there of, you go. Uh, kind of swallow the... Missile. On your last nerve, looking for some offensive support from her blockers. On your one on one, yes, got it done. Oh, 
Anya getting four points up to 12 for Des Moines. Uh, just a little less than twice the score there between these two teams, uh, which is exactly what we expected to see. I believe we were on broadcast yesterday for a Des Moines, a very exciting Des Moines game. Uh, they seem to bring a lot of intensity here. Oh, yeah. Uh, as does Tampa. Princess Slaya out here again, up against Goldie Knox. Goldie is lead jammer, but Slaya right oh. hot on his tail. Calling He's it off before approaching turn one. Mm -hmm. Some of you with really good eyes and uh, really good eyes, I, I say, for roller derby uh, and um, uh, really into Twitch are into that squad mode, that squad cast to watch both games at the same time. Yes, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot to pay attention to. Frico Suave is lead jammer drawing Sasquatch all the way out up front and out off the track. Frico Suave... Whoa! Back block penalty. So a little bit of a jammer swap here. Ladies man coming out. A forearm the first call and a back block the second call. Both jammers back in play. Number 99, Honey Badger uh, doing some great one-on-one -on -one defense. Ooh! A second penalty for Frico Suave. Uh, some nice defense here from Des Moines. They've caught Honey Batcher uh, as a goat in the back. Definitely the blocker you want to get off your jammer. I believe that's the third jammer penalty for Frico Suave. Uh, we'll see if we can get a count at halftime. Uh, Tampa definitely has a deeper jammer rotation, so uh, it will be interesting to see what the coaching staff does at that point. Frico Suave seemed to be in the penalty box for more than 30 seconds, so likely may have exited uh, early. It seemed to me that uh, it seemed to be a little early. Just a no. Oh, oh whoa. No. Uh, okay, that time called for blocking with the head, and ooh, and uh, uh, Frico off camera with a. Uh, sign of disgust but uh, is now seated in the penalty box 16 points scored in opposition 104 now to 47 yes definitely frustrating uh, how many penalties was that in one gym three now three now uh, absolutely frustrating uh, for a jammer and for a team when your uh, when your point score is there uh, frustrating for officials too I'm sure they're going to take some deep breaths here as we have this official timeout uh, shout out to Montana Mahler, uh, head NSO here today, uh, checking in, making sure everything is all uh, all set here for our friends. Is that why they put Montana Mahler's name on the list twice? Maybe because she has two roles. Maybe. Oh, you, you lazy derby people, you only have two jobs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these officiating crews... I've been absolute rock stars, working so hard, keeping everyone safe, uh, double, triple, quadruple, checking points with one another. Uh, always really impressed when jam refs uh, consult with the OPRs. Right. Where were the hips? Where were the toes? Uh, even more than just were they in? Because uh, these are close games, and anything could happen. Uh, any any chatter there on our interwebs? Uh, yes, we're talking about the squad streaming, talking about the size of people's TVs. Um, <laughs> uh, Vince Hannity, one of our um, 
one of our esteemed colleagues uh, watching from uh, from the Sunshine State. Thank you for joining us. Um, he missed the uh, he missed the sunglass gag. I'll I'll give you a hint. It was based on a song from the '80s. That was the first gag. The second gag was from Airplane. Probably got that. Um, yeah, but thank you, thank you everyone for joining us, joining in the chat. Uh, it can be educational, informative. It can also be entertaining as well uh, to talk derby while you watch derby. Yes, certainly. Um, some exciting things going on um, with aging out juniors in some of these teams. Uh, so be sure to keep an eye on uh, things changing up here. So uh, Des Moines has... Um, Goldie Knox is, is aging out. Goldie Knox, a really key player here in our jammer rotation for Des Moines. A gold medalist in the 2019 World Roller Games, trying out for the USARS national team. Wow. Um, we'll be attending Carl Sandburg College in the fall. Uh, so we wish him all the best in his derby adventures um, and academic adventures. Um, hopefully there will be a men's league somewhere is going to grab him right up. Uh, Cuban Missile, uh, uh, also a gold medalist in the 2019 World Roller Games and a silver medalist at the 2018 JRDA World Cup. She will be playing for the Continental Cup with the WFTDA Team United. So already uh, making gains on both rosters. Uh, Miss Batitude is also aging out. Uh, going to study radiation sciences. Hmm. Uh, maybe she'll be looking at uh, brain scans and bone x-rays uh, and playing a medical role um, uh, for the Roller Derby League in near the University of Iowa. We will see. All right. And we are back. Power start for Goldie Knox. Suave evading some contact there in turn two, uh, getting through for the initial pass. And a power jam for Frico oh. Suave. Uh, just what this team, this jammer, and this crowd needed from Tampa. I definitely want to have a, a positive run to shake off uh, those three jammer penalties. And five jammer penalties in two jams among the jammers. There we go, Frico Suave getting his uh, swerve on, so to speak, um, able to pick up two scoring passes. Yes, some incredible toe stop work, spin moves. Frico Suave uh, doing an excellent job in this power jam opportunity. Some knocking around and pile ups there. A cut track penalty going to number 23. That's Recknology. I think it was a cut. I think the toe went out a little bit. Frico Suave. Ooh. Frico, Su Frico Suave, excuse me, uh, with good skate control, uh, earning the first point, rather, in that scoring trip by my vantage point. He looks exhausted. Is. Yeah. And yeah, second second jam in and uh, two action-packed jams, put it that way. But uh, yes, that is 19 big points for Tampa, up to 66 now, four uh, for Des Moines, up to 108. So net 15 there for Tampa, high scoring jam in the game. Well, I am, I'm glad for Frico Suave to be able to do that, uh, especially after such a tough run before. So Jamnesia in effect, and here we are again, Shark Bites and Ladies Man. A very fast move back. Shark Bites with an apex jump, picking up a full set of points. Ladies Man uh, steals a single point at the back. Wow. A nice run for Tampa. 
closing that lead only a 39 point differential four minutes four and a half minutes left in this period anything can happen 4-1 despite not having lead there four and a half minutes yes to go in the period and whew, we have a game again on your last nerve up again for tampa goldie knox Goldie Knox, yes, with lead jam. Doesn't look like it was blocked out, but lead jam declared. And immediately call it, well, not immediately, but immediately after realizing uh, that Anya Last Nerve is going to break free, no, uh, no sense in keeping that going uh, was the thought there. Certainly, and I think Goldie Knox uh, uh, feeling some of that contact probably after a two-jammer rotation. Uh, I mean, the kid is not quite a machine, even though he appears to be a jamming machine. Uh, might need a little bit of a break. Uh, yeah, to rest, rest that young body. Ladies' man, one-on-one -on -one blocking with Princess Slaya. Slaya through on the outside is lead jammer. High block High called. Block. Yes, in stereo. <laughs> That's a power jam for Princess Slaya. A much needed power jam for Tampa. Coach saying go, go, go. Worth mentioning that yes, Des Moines with that two jammer rotation except for jam number eight of 20 uh, in which Enigma jammed once. Yes, uh, Princess Slaya with the toe stop. Spin, another scoring pass. One on one is ladies man back in play. Cut called on Sonic Boom for Tampa. Slay a sneaking past, putting up more points. Coach saying, that's good, we're happy, give it a call off. Really narrowing that lead, 12 and 0 run for Tampa. They are surely uh, running up here. Last four jams, 35 to five in favor of Tampa. However, last six, let's see, 35, 21 still in favor of Tampa. Then we go back to a 4-12 jam in favor of Des Moines. So. Uh, back and forth, but uh, it seems like more fourth lately. Yes, Goldie Knox, lead jammer for Des Moines. Frico Suave. Oh, forearm penalty on Goldie Knox. Uh, Frico Suave pushing up this very fast pack. That Sasquatch. And Enigma up front, last line of defense. We're going, we're going a full two minutes and this will take us to half. This will be the, ooh. ooh. A hard drop here on the Pollock Cement here at the ranch in Loveland, Colorado. Teams with, uh, I would say, plenty of, uh, plenty of experience on this floor now. They were able to practice uh, also Thursday afternoon and evening on it. Uh, Frico, I think, uh, feeling some exhaustion. Uh, could be the altitude, could be the roller derby. Uh, Goldie Knox out of the penalty box, picking up four points. Uh, Frico holding his hip like he's got a stitch there. But we are going a full two minutes, so he's coming up looking for more points. A great push out from, I believe, that was Sonic Boom. Frico recovers. Okay, now you see it on camera. Does recover. Jam continues. Period clock has expired, and since we are going... A full two minutes. Oh. Frico Suave with a cut track. I'd be screaming, skate, skate, skate. If I, there you go, Tampa. Skated out. Uh, an exciting first half. 90 
points for Tampa, 117 Des Moines. A tie run there, that last jam. Uh, great things to come here on this pink track. But boy, wasn't that last jam fun to watch, as was the entire first half. Just more of uh, what you would expect right here with the Junior Roller Derby Association, right? Absolutely. Stick around. We'll see you back in about 14 minutes. Welcome back. And in honor of Goldie Knox's final JRDA game, uh, attending Carl Sandburg College in the fall, Goldie Knox comes in on little cat feet. He sits looking over track and pack on silent haunches and then moves through. <laughs> Carl Sandberg. I know. I'm just not sure how I'm supposed to follow up with that. I said, I'm going to go and take a picture of the penalty tracking sheets so we can talk about that because folks at home are probably really curious. And you're going to pass me off from a, from a poem from your middle school days. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the lesson in nah, literature. That's, nah, that's, that's Carl. <laughs> so all the best to, read mine. to Goldie Knox. Uh, uh, looking at the penalty, uh, Goldie Knox sitting with three penalties uh so nothing really to worry about uh enigma number 731 for des moines sitting with four penalties uh really uh, i mean a, a variety and range of penalties there uh for des moines nothing too significant um i'm sure what people were really wondering is what does that count on frico suave right. i have five penalties there um still a couple to give um not many penalties elsewhere on uh on Tampa, uh, Honey Badger's got two, but that's that's really it. So okay. um, lots of lots of depth in the roster and rotations, and I, I think great things are going to happen in the second half. I'm excited to be here. Power start here for Goldie Knox. Multiplayer block going to uh, Recknology, white number 23. Uh, Enigma with a fabulous offensive push there, getting Goldie Knox through for his first scoring pass. Oh, oh, oh Frico Suave uh, with a great little apex jump. Uh, that was his initial pass having come out of the penalty box. Notice, uh, yes, uh, notice the jammer there waiting till the last possible second. I mean, like, portion of a second to call off that jam. I was wondering if Frigo was going to get that one blocker point, uh, which would have meant two, but not happening there. Uh, two scoring passes there for Goldie Knox and the Des Moines Derby Brats. Pack advantage here for Tampa as uh, Recknology uh, standing off screen in the penalty box. Ladies man and on your last nerve. Pile up and no penalties. Uh, however, it did send on your last nerve uh, to the back to reset. Uh, great offense from Des Moines getting ladies man through for another scoring pass. All right, that's Princess Slaya lining up. Goldie Knox again. Uh, yeah, that uh, tight two jammer rotation for the most part. Uh, Coming from Des Moines. And we're playing a game of five on five here. Princess Slayer with unofficially 16 points in the first period of the 90 from Tampa, including 12 in the next to last jam. Tale of two derbies uh, on this pack, and lead jam it is, Goldie Knox. Uh, 
It was the best of jams. It was the worst of jams. Anyway, yes, three in a row for Des Moines. I'll stop now. Goalie knocks going long here. Slay a sneaking past Enigma on that toe stop. Picking up points. Uh, blocker penalty going to number 62. Cuban Missile. And Princess Slaya with four points, making eight. And those four being matched. Princess Slaya with some nice work on that inside line, but a big drawback from Enigma. Direction called on uh, Miss Banditude 7-Eleven. Slaya evading that chest contact from Enigma. Really great uh, offensive push from the Des Moines blockers, pushing all of Tampa through to the inside, opening up minimum two lanes there for uh, Goldie Knox to just make his way through for a fourth scoring pass, 16-12 to 12 there for Des Moines. Uh, still only a 43-point differential here. Uh, Tampa has lots of time, 25 minutes still on this period clock, uh, to make some gains. Uh, they're going to try and do that with Shark Bites, having the star on his head up against Ladies Man. Shark Bites is lead. Shark Bites with at least eight points in the first period. Actually, Frico, uh, that's Frico Suave. As I look up from the records. Oh, it is. Sorry, my Frico bad. Frico Suave's uh, Frico jersey. Suave. Well, more points than that. And uh, four points, uh, yes, that does go to Frico Suave. Pulled the scoreboard operator. I think there's so much pink around on that team. I'm, I'm seeing now Shark Bites is lining up with pink laces, and there's pink wheels. Uh, I'll pay closer attention now. <laughs> Frico Suave was 16 points in the first period. And four previously there. Uh, Hot Wheels, uh, number nine there on Tampa. With a great push out and draw back on Goldie Knox. And clockwise block. Being called on uh, 731 there, Enigma. As Shark Bites, oh, stays in and completes the scoring trip. This could be the second jam in a row in which Tampa has outscored Des Moines. Complicated taking a seat in the penalty box for a high block penalty. Goldie Knox with a star stash. That is not something that I've seen happen from him. Amazing effort from Hot Wheels. That last line of defense out front for uh, Tampa, a force to be reckoned with, surely. Nine, nine and oh run for Tampa. Catching it up, narrowing lead, that lead. Uh, 30 points, if my math is correct. As Lenny Kravitz sang in 1989, it ain't over till it's over. Absolutely. Uh, seen a number of games that uh, look to be going in one direction and headed in another and then back and forth who knows i'm um, at this level of performance here this is a championship game all of these teams that are here Ooh. are here for a reason just like ladies man <laughs> just a hop skip and a jump over that down skater from tampa any other uh 
any other caliber of roller derby, that would have been curtains for the for the jammer, at least in uh, probably the next three jams. But uh, no, good uh, good awareness there and completes the scoring trip. Uh, four points up there. Quick uh, hit it and quit it. Call it off there for Des Moines. Slay it back out. Uh, and I believe this is uh, K-Boom. Uh, first time we've seen K-Boom relief jammer for Des Moines Derby Brats. And only the second of same uh, that we've seen in this game. The first time Enigma was the jammer in jam number eight way back then. Kaboom, Lee Jane. All right, Princess Leia taking a big hit from uh, Sasquatch. Sasquatch going to the penalty box. Slay able to just get up and run right back on the track. And not before Kaboom uh, picks up their four points and calls it off. 153, 115 now. Uh, I feel like that sounds like a bad day. Rico <laughs> Sua Frico Suave and ladies, man. Uh, ooh, big denial there on Frico from Enigma. Big long drawback. And now, there we go. Some uh, fifth blocker work, or rather third, now fourth, as uh, Tampa has another skater returning to play. Forearm penalty going to uh, Enigma, which will be some nice relief for Frico to get some some gains here. And ladies man, uh, avoiding all those ladies on the track. Picks up another set of points. Eight it is, 161 now to 115. And in this, in this uh, period, Tampa with 25, Des Moines with uh, more than that. Six penalties for Enigma, I'm hearing. Uh, so that's big because he is definitely a game maker, play right. changer sort of blocker out there for Des Moines. 44 25 in this period, uh, Des Moines over Tampa. The pacing. Uh, shark bites up against Sasquatch uh, and friends. Uh, shark bites with a quick jump. Uh, Goldie Knox is your lead, Jeremy. It's the fifth place game right here in the open division and the third place game in the open division being, being held on the other tra track between the attack pack and Mob City. The championship game of the Open Division will be 7 p.m. tonight. Uh, that is Mountain Time uh, between Philly and the Diamond City Miners, so 6 Pacific, 9 Eastern. And the championship game for the female division will be in between. That will be at 5 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time. Uh, that's between Santa Cruz and Los Anarchists, so we will say that is 4 Pacific, 7 Eastern. All right, Anya, last nerve. Uh, getting on the last nerve of these Des Moines blockers here. Uh, powerful three wall. Anya taking a big hit from Sasquatch on the inside line. Uh, recycled back. Oh, some contact there between ladies man and Hot Wheels. No penalty being called. Successful star pass from Anya last nerve to number 10, uh, Rain to Pain. Rain still with star in hand. I believe this is the initial pass. Star pass to Rain the Pain, yes, and uh, star is on. Uh, that is, yes, eight points now, 172 to 
one sixteen. And in the in the Twitch chat, okay, yes, uh, those of you who've been especially following roller derby around the state of Florida and uh, on regional television in Jacksonville, what have I been saying since 2012? Here it is at Paul Weaver 2015. Wow, I would have never thought of watching junior roller derby, but this <laughs> is as good, if not better, than the adult sport. Uh, I'm not going to disagree with you. I have found a love in particular for open division roller derby this weekend. Um, but uh, female division, all junior roller derby is just spectacular. I, I mean, this is high level, the best of the best. And I think many of these teams uh, would absolutely school your uh, house league adult teams. And uh, they will be making waves as they enter the adult league of roller derby. And have. <laughs> and, and have, and have. Um, I mean, we see mostly uh, Lauren Munch making uh, the first real big wave as a junior aged up, but uh, lots of others coming up through. I was at ECDX not long ago. Uh, Santa Cruz had a number of the Santa Cruz um, junior skaters on the Santa Cruz roster, and they are Santa Cruz adults are making climbs in rankings thanks to uh, this number one JRDA female division. Right. Santa Cruz has always had uh, an excellent program, and we will definitely see them in the championship game. Excellent junior program, if I said. Absolutely. Excellent junior program here in Tampa. Uh, Princess Slaya joining this team this year from Pittsburgh is your lead jammer. She's going to take that push out and call up. Uh, two points, but no points for Kaboom. With 172, 118, 16 and a half to go in the game. Uh, lots of time for big things to happen here. Uh, advantage here for Des Moines as Tampa only has two blockers on the pack, uh, but that's nothing. Frico Suave is lead jammer. A uh, great push out and drawback from Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels working together with Peaches and Scream to try to hold back. Uh, that's Brick House number three going to the penalty box. Uh, no points on the board for Goldie Knox. Four up for Tampa. 50-point lead for Des Moines. Uh, three on three with the blockers out here. Each team has a blocker in the penalty box. Ladies' man and shark bites. Uh, great sportsmanship there. Fist bumps on the jam start line. Shark bites lead. That's two in a row for Tampa. Who? And oh. takes the occupied inside, but. Oh, the officials are going to have to talk about that one. That was a flying leap. Uh, four points up, four shark bites. Um, no fear. I mean, we're, no. we're just launching ourselves over that <laughs> apex. That is the beauty of junior roller derby. Of course, what happens in the air is on you, and yeah, you take it, it's it's high risk, high reward, high risk maneuver, if you will. On your last nerve, uh, getting blocked a little bit by Goldie Knox, playing that uh, fifth or rather fourth blocker. Uh, a little bit of relief there for On your last nerve as Sasquatch takes a seat in the penalty box. Uh, Anya only has. Two, oh wait, now three uh, Des Moines blockers. Two again. Uh, some toe stop work from Anya Last Nerve is your lead jammer. It doesn't look like it, but yes, that is. Three lead jams in a row for Tampa, but uh, Red kind of, uh, scarf waving, yeah. call it off, right? Right. Well, when it's a jammer like Goldie Knox and they've passed you, I think that's the right call to make, Coach. Timeout White, timeout Des Moines. Uh, let's see, what can we talk about? Uh, we can talk about uh, junior MVP at the age of 20, Gallifrey, 
So yes, Junior's making gains in the WFTDA. Mm-hmm. Uh, WFTDA postseason action. If you've been living under a rock, maybe you don't know about these things. Most of us do. Uh, August 9th through 11th, America West in Utah, uh, 23rd to 25th, uh, North America East in Lancaster, PA. Uh, international WFDDA playoffs September 6th through 8th in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. 13th through 15th of September is in Seattle, Washington. The Continental Cup, uh, thank you to Helsinki, Finland for that in October. And the big one, the WFDDA International Championship event hosted for the first time not in the United States by Montreal Roller Derby. Only 3,000 yeah. tickets available for that. Be sure to go to wftda.com slash tickets to go there. See it in real life, especially those of you from the Northeast. That's going to be, yeah, that's going to be a big one. The grandmother of them all. The grandmother of them all. Speaking of grandma, uh, ladies' man, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, and Princess Slaya. We're talking old old Star Wars. Slaya was the grandma. Uh, not so much anymore. Uh, lead jammer is ladies' man. Slaya making it through on her initial pass. That is a first lead jam and four for Des Moines. Okay, well, uh, they're still doing a great job holding Tampa back. And keeping that 50-point lead. All right, full, uh, sorry, full complement of blockers on both sides. Empty penalty box. It's been a while. Yes, yes. Uh, kudos to these kids for uh, closing it down. Uh, Frico Suave trying to take that outside line. Denied by Des Moines blocker number 23, Recknology and Friends. Goldenocks pushing up front a very... High block penalty going oh. to Goldie Knox. And the grinding defense, but uh, let up as 12 17. Frico Suave with lead jam. Fourth lead jam in five for Tampa. Uh, Lemonade joining uh, Goldie Knox in the penalty box. Uh, just probably about one second difference. Uh, we'll see Goldie Knox get released and then Lemonade right behind him. I wonder what that's going to do to our gameplay here. Frico pushing past Des Moines, picking up another set of points. And there we go, release from the penalty box. Ooh. Oh, Frico with a jump. And yes, officially scored. Yes. Points are up. And again. Another jump from Rico. Honestly, if you've got it, do it. It's way easier than fighting against that strong tripod of Des Moines blockers. If it's working for him, do it. Goldie Knox pushing through, picking up four points. A one on that last pass, so 17 to four run for Frico Suave and Tampa, narrowing that lead. 37 point differential now. Now, uh, yeah, earning 17, giving up four there, net 13, but still 180, 143, and 1040 to go. Official timeout, uh, referees sending I'm just listening I'm sorry listening to the officials uh, talking to the Tampa bench which is in within my earshot uh, I think there is some uh, body fluids on the track um, officials just doing a great job thank you to Ninja uh, for encouraging teammates to look out for each other, look on yourself, look on your clothing, uh, look on your body. Let's try to figure out uh, where the injury is coming from. 
and get the spill cleaned up. Right. Sometimes it's, uh, and you know, even just in real life, sometimes it's not apparent. Uh, you just uh, see blood and you don't know where it came from, and then uh, and then eventually you find it. But uh, but yeah, well, we uh, we get that uh, cleaned up and want to um, want to uh, uh, have that stopped so everyone could uh, continue playing if possible. Awesome. And uh, medical staff on the situation, so they have uh, they have that under control, cleaning that up. Definitely not the first time this weekend we've uh, we've seen some some things going on. Uh, empty penalty box, though, so we're going to play a good old game of five on five. All right. That's, uh, I'm assuming, ladies' man and shark bites. Yeah, good assumption there. It is ladies' man. Shark bites taking a seat in the penalty box. Uh, so ladies' man with the opportunity to score lead. Yes, he does. And a power jam. Second lead jam in three, and particularly for ladies' man. Offense coming in from the in, breaking up that Tampa D. Ladies' man picking up four points. Strict defense. More of the same in the back. Uh, trust us on that. Now two Tampa blockers bridging. And the entire straightaway occupied momentarily. Now uh, Shark Bites uh, continuing to work. Three blockers uh, set upon and send the jammer out. And again. Shark Bites getting pushed out and drawn back in the center of the pack, back of the pack. Uh, ladies' man pushing, pushing, pushing out the front, uh, getting that third scoring pass. Shark bite getting absolutely shut down there at the back by Recknology and Cuban Missile and Sour Cheetah. Now, of note there, uh, I may have noticed, it appeared that Ladies' Man was a little slow to recover, though I can't tell now. It could be exhaustion. It could be it could be anything. It could also be clock management. Yes. It could be. If, if I were Des Moines, I would try to burn those minutes. Absolutely. You've got a, a sizable lead. We're back up to a 52-point differential after that 15-0 run. For ladies, man. Wow, yes. Uh, 15 plus 4, 19. That uh, cancels plus to the 17-point jam uh, previously from Tampa. And on your last nerve, taking a seat in the penalty box. Ooh. Another power jam for Des Moines. Uh, failure to reform. Sending number 23, Recknology, to the penalty box. Yeah, quick open up on that inside lane, and Goldie Knox is through for another scoring pass. Recknology in her fourth champs. You remember that name? Ooh, on your last nerve. That's, uh, yeah. Out of bounds there, so good reset. Mm -hmm. Pivot eliminates, called out. And scoring trip complete on the outside. Some Princess Leia super fans in the crowd cheering her on as she dons the star for Tampa up against Ladies Man. This period, 90 to 53 in favor of Des Moines. Last two jams, it is a two jam, 27 point rally by Des Moines. Sasquatch uh, 
push out and draw back on Princess Slayer. Third lead jam for Ladies Man in Ladies Man's third jam, and it is third jam in five. Princess Leia making it through on her initial pass as a ladies man continues to fight through at the front and push uh, four full points for ladies man. 215 now, 143 as that is the third uh, scoreless jam for Tampa in a time when uh, they would need it the most. Yes, only five, uh, five minute, 20 seconds left. Official timeout happening here. Yeah, that is a 35 jam three point rally. Another aging out skater, uh, three more for uh, Des Moines, of course, we have Enigma, as we mentioned before, uh, free agent skater, wants to start refing. Also, we're told uh, Miss Batitude will study radiation sciences at the University of Iowa in the fall. And uh, Cuban Missile, uh, I know you recognize that name, Cuban Missile, Sofia Hernandez, gold medalist in the 2019 World Roller Games and a silver medalist at the 2018 JRDA World Cup, will be playing for the Continental Cup with the WFTA Team United. And uh, that team, Team United from Iowa as well. All right, and here we are, official timeout taken care of. It's Frico Suave and Goldie Knox. Goldie Knox. All right. Frico has lead. And the pack also favoring Tampa, fast moving pack. And oh, spins through on the scoring trip. All right, Enigma back out on the track. I expect there's a few penalties there. I think we haven't seen him out for a little bit. That's uh, Shark Bites and Ladies Man. Looking to pick up points for their teams. Blocker standing for Des Moines. Uh, that's Cuban Missile in the stripe. Shark Bites with the run up that outside is your lead jammer. Two in a row for Tampa. Oh. Ooh. And Ladies and men went out, but nobody uh, nobody went out for the drawback. A little different there. Uh, 151 now, 215, two jam, eight point rally for Tampa. And uh, Tampa skaters, as we mentioned, uh, Abby Normal, uh, Anya Last Nerve, Frico Suave, and Mean Bean, all siblings. Uh, some other skaters that uh, you may remember having seen from Team USA East, East is Beast, Hot Wheels, uh, also Princess Slayer and Honey Badger. Hot Wheels also on the uh, Team Southeast Thunder at the uh, World Cup previous. I think that was in Lincoln, right? Or it was uh, either way. I, I I couldn't make it, but I did I did watch it online. Um, Hot Wheels also with experience with the Duval All Stars uh, as co-captain of Tampa. I'm so see, not all the Duval All Stars play for the Attack Pack. <laughs> but there is a lot of crossover. Yeah. A lot of crossover in Florida and a lot of crossover in California between the Diamond City Miners and the Los Anarchists. Uh, so some of those ladies are doing uh, double shift back to back 
uh, championship adventures here today, uh, this evening. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, official review going on here, official review called by Tampa. Um, I expect coach is looking for some sort of skating out of bounds or cut track penalty on, uh, I believe it was ladies man, uh, who took some contact, went out, stayed out for some time. I think that he came back on the track and then called it. I'm not exactly ah. sure of the sequence of things. So... Um, Maybe, maybe I'm throwing my hands like. Let's get the official word. You called it. All right. Well, I was uh, I was somewhat right in that uh, that was exactly what Tampa was looking for was uh, some sort of penalty call on. Ladies, man, uh, they did not retain their official review. The officials uh, said that there was no contact that forced him down and or out. Uh, he just slipped and fell of his own accord. Uh, so no penalty to be awarded. Tampa loses their official review. And on your last nerve and K-Boom uh, out here with the stars on. Anya taking a penalty for a high block. K-Boom through. Tampa's third jammer penalty in six jams after a relatively clean uh, first 16 jams of this half. Yeah, jammer penalties. Uh, jammer penalties are a big thing. Uh, defense is a big thing. It's, uh, it's the game we play. Uh, illegal contact penalty going to Anya Last Nerve. Uh, she Ooh. came out of that penalty box with a lot of speed and a lot of energy. Uh, so the contact was a little bit excessive there. Back to back jammer penalties is not what Tampa's looking for at this stage of the game. Only two and a half minutes left, 218 to 151. Uh, you're better at that mental math, but it's uh, a larger than a 50 point differential there. So. Uh, Going and to be a tough one for Tampa to rally back. If you've been following roller derby but not in a while, remember Jamers no longer score on each other. The maximum points you can get at a time in a scoring trip is four. So even the power jams have been uh, uh, not as fruitful as they used to be. And especially so being a power jam because you automatically score on that jammer. And uh, any other time the jammer gets lapped, that does not happen anymore. Uh, as far as the uh, other games being played, yes, the championship game in the female division between Santa Cruz and Los Anarchos, Battle of California, that will be at 5 Mountain Time, so that is 4 Pacific, 7 Eastern, right here on WFTDA.TV. Here in the open division, the Attack Pack and Mob City Misfits uh, playing opposite us right now for third place in the open division. The championship game in the open division, the Diamond City Miners versus Philly, uh, that will be at seven mountain time so that is six pacific nine eastern dcm and philly in the open division championship uh previous to that capital city uh, earning seventh place over the cherry bomb brawlers and the sodak attack in their champs debut over raleigh for ninth place in the female division Rocky Mountain over Queen City for ninth place this morning. Pile of Bones from Regina, Saskatchewan over Rose City for seventh. Uh, Foco Spartans over Kalamazoo for fifth place. And the Duval All-Stars over the Seattle Derby Brats, the Galaxy Girls for third place in the female division. And Anya Last Nerve is out of the game. Yes, for the first time out here uh, with the star on, Triple Eight, Screen Puff for Des Moines. Uh, pitching up front of that last line of defense, Princess Slaya with a little uh, coming out of the penalty box shortly, serving a penalty for on the last serve. 
Cream Puff relief jammer for Des Moines. Yeah, first jam this time for Scream Puff. Have seen Scream Puff jam earlier on the weekend. Yes, absolutely. I, I feel like this this point in time, uh, towards the end here, uh, Des Moines gives Scream Puff the star. And I think pretty successful. I feel like last time they, they, were, they were lead and uh, putting up points. So one point on the board for Scream Puff and the Des Moines Derby Brats. Ladies, man, and Frico lining up here uh, in what could be could be the last last jam of the game. Frico nope. completes the initial trip but does not earn lead. Frico, uh, despite that, of course, on the scoring trip and completes it. Spins and completes the second scoring trip for eight. Tampa looking to finish strong despite the uh, turn of events uh, starting in the uh, middle of the first half, we'll say. Four more points making 12. Frigo taking a big hit Ooh, in yeah. turn three from Enigma. Uh, doing a stop, drop, and roll. He's down to the ground again. He is very physical. Uh, last jam of the game. Ladies, and man. That. Yep. Calls the jam after 9 and 12 for Tampa. Unofficial final then will be 163 229. And uh, as, as one of my colleagues would say, uh, despite a major mathematical catastrophe uh des moines now will <laughs> will be declared fifth place fifth place here in the open division at the junior roller derby association championships another fun game to watch and we still are not done yet live free right here wftda.tv more junior roller derby action to come yes congratulations to des moines on an excellent effort coming into this tournament at fifth holding on to their place. Congratulations to them. I'm Viola DeRola. It's been a pleasure to call this game. I'm standby. Catch you later.